Say what I said. Let me see if you Good afternoon for anybody who doesn't know me. Like Keith says, I'm Martin. My parents and Keith's parents have been friends all our lives, so growing up we spent a lot of time together. I'm proud to be Keith's best man today, genuinely proud. And I realise I've got two great jobs today. The first one is to look after Keith, the second one is to embarrass him. <laughs> um, we were going to embarrass him last weekend, I was going to do a, a little stag prank when we went on the stag do. I went on a stag do a couple of years ago, and the best man got the stag so, so yeah, the best man got the stag so drunk he passed out. And while he was passed out, they shaved his head. I didn't think it was really appropriate last weekend to be shaving Keith's head. Um, we look at him, we look at his angelic face and his responsible job and his beautiful wife, and it doesn't look possible that he could have any embarrassing stories. <laughs> but it is possible. <laughs> When Keith was on holiday from university, he went to go and stay at a friend's house, a friend's parents' house. His friend and her, par and her parents went to work in the morning, leaving Keith tucked up in bed. Keith got out of bed, locked the door, got in his car, as he was leaving, slammed his escort into the side of his friend's dad's jag. My first reaction was just to laugh my head off when I heard it, but then the second reaction was, well, I wonder what he did. What did he do? Did he leave a note on the windscreen? Did he have a phone call of an apology? Or leave some insurance details? No, he just simply drove away and pretended it wasn't him. <laughs> we went camping in the Lake District, and we went for a few beers, didn't we, Keith? Uh, I had quite a few beers in the afternoon and then into the evening, but quite late on in the evening, Keith decided to go home because he felt a bit queasy. Went back to the tent. Me and my other friend had one more pint, got back to the tent about half an hour later. No Keith. I mean, I was a bit worried. He's been gone half an hour. It's only a minute walk back to the tent. Where is he? I started to panic. So I sat down, opened a beer, put my feet up, waited for him to come back. 20 minutes later he did appear, topless, <laughs> and if we, we wondered where he was and we found out for the last hour, 50 minutes, he'd been asleep on the public toilet floor, 50 yards away from our tent, <laughs> women and children stepping over him to get to the toilet. <laughs> but my favourite story, without a doubt, is my mum and dad's 25th wedding anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> We watched the cricket in the afternoon and Keith had a few beers in the house. So come early evening, my mother, the host of the party, and Keith's, one of Keith's mother's closest friends, took it upon herself to advise Keith that maybe he had a few too many. Advise him to have an hour off the beer or a bite to eat, something to sober him up for the day. This angered Keith, he swore in her face and ran out the front door. <laughs> I was 17 at the time, and I've, in 17 years, I've never seen anybody brave enough to swear at my mum. <laughs> and it was the F word that instantly became my hero. <laughs> but comedy, no, we watched him out the front, the front window, and he was, he was staggering up the, up, the, up the road like that. And we started getting a bit worried again because he was gone for at least three, four minutes before he realised how drunk he was, he realised he didn't have any money and he didn't really know where he was. So he turned round, staggered back with his tail between his legs, was sick in the house. He was sick full strawberries as well, which I've never seen before. And then he went to bed, passed out and missed the party. Comedy stories aside though, Keith, you've been a great mate to me. Many, many years ago, you probably can't. <laughs> you probably can't remember this, but he taught me how to blow my nose. Still, I still remember to this day. <laughs> Ten years later, he taught me how to do a spin bowl in cricket. At the end of the lesson, I still couldn't do it, and I can't do it now, but it's a really nice memory of me and you growing up, mate. <laughs> Jane, you've already been to the greatest family I know as well. 
Oh, go on, Martin. I'm just going to skip a bit out so I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Martin. <clears throat> but also, mum and dad, a brother and sister, are responsible, as well as Keith, for making him the good man he is today, the funny man he is today, the gentle man he is today, the bald man he is today. <laughs> Because Keith went bald so stupidly early, so stupidly young, Jane's never known him with any other hair. <laughs> Lads a week. Jamie. <laughs> so I thought, as all Keith and his friends and family are here, and all Jane's friends and family are here, uh, I thought it would be a nice idea. I thought it would be a nice idea if we could design and keep a new hairdo for the honeymoon. Jamie might have to spend You get three. So, the ushers and my nephew are handing out some, some handouts. And I'm hoping you're all going to get one of these leaflets. So if you can all open them up, pass them around, so you've all got one leaflet each. <laughs> so as you can see in the middle, I put a few old school photographs of Keith. So I thought we could either reinvent some of his old hairdos, I like the rock and roll long hairdo in the middle best. We could either reinvent some of the old ones, Oh, you, you're more than welcome to uh, invent some new ones for yourself. I'm going to leave these with you for uh, ten minutes. I'm going to bring some pens. Right? Get the lads to bring some pens. Right? I'll leave them with you for ten minutes. Come and collect them. And I've got a couple of prizes for the best ones later on. <laughs> so for now, I'd like to propose a toast. I think it's appropriate if we're all upstanding and we raise our glasses to Keith and Jane. Keith and Jane. <laughs>